everybody and this is Mark with Shadow Wolf Designs here for another 3D tutorial and uh, today we're going to be covering something that at Pierce College this quarter uh, spring of 2013 uh, assignment 7 um, it's morphing Im objects doing endomorphs um, and just setting up different morph targets uh, environment with two lights you guys already know how to do that um, so I'm not going to cover that uh, this all the assignments in Brian's classes now require um, are required to be rendered in a sequence of frames instead of an animation um, for quality purposes so when you go in I'll, I'll cover it but don't um, don't save it as an animation, save it as a sequence of pings are the best, um, especially if you have any sort of transparency that you plan on using. Uh, but TIFF24 works as well, but let's get into it. So we got Modeler here, and I already have an object set up. Uh, it has some geometry, and it also has been uh, sub-patched. Notice the rounded corners. So I'm going to hop into my 4-up four view. Four up view. Alright, so you get on your polygon tool. And then to make a morph, down here you have weight. Uh, the W is weight maps, the T is textures, the M is morphs. And I am not sure what the C and the S are because I have not used them. But go into morphs and you'll notice this says base. And that's what you want it to look like when you don't apply any morphs and I want it to just look like this it's a flat box well it's a rounded flattish box so to make a morph is really simple you click you click on where it says base click new name it so I'm gonna go left create and then you can close that and you see new map left created and over here at the bottom right of your thing where it used to say base it now says left that means you are editing the le the morph that is named left so what we're gonna do is we're gonna right click and draw around and I'm gonna select these polygons and I know I'm actually on the right but it that doesn't matter so much so most of the things that you can do in modify can be used as a morph um, the simplest one obviously is a move or a rotate and say I want this portion to wag back and forth I only have to set it up one way and you'll see why when we get to layout um, so I rotate that because that's the morph I want to use and then I simply go back to base you notice it reset itself and it's back to the beginning now if I click on left again it shows you that morph which means I can now edit this again so if I'm like ah that's a little bit too far then go back to base and it resets now every time you make a new morph it's advisable to go back to base so then when you click new create and I just left this as morph it's back at the starting position so nothing's nothing's getting messed up alright so just to show you guys a little bit of something else that this can do I'm gonna scale this portion and we'll just scale that down and that's morph 2 base morph base all right now I'm gonna save this and then I'm gonna send it to layout because layouts your next step so we got the box here and I'm just gonna turn on smoothing real quick just so it looks nicer and I'm gonna get out of camera view okay so let me move this out of the way so what right now what we have is we have our tutorial object and this 
This step is very important to have different objects on different layers. You want the object that you're morphing on its own layer. And you really need to get used to putting different objects on their own layers. That way you can move them independently. They don't react when something else reacts. But make sure you have your object selected. Hit properties. And this box will pop up. And just first things first, set subdivision order to last. Right here. It starts out at first, just put it to last. Get in the habit of doing that too. And then you click on, you start on geometry tab, click on the deform tab, and then you'll notice if you watch the last tutorial, displacement maps right here, this time we're going to use morph mixer. Click on that and you'll see your two morphs. And we'll bring this down here, minimize that. Now you see left and you see morph. And you notice these sliders are in the center. Well, if I slide this one way, that's 100%. So that is the full um, morph that I made. And we'll rotate up so you can see it a little bit better. But in Modeler, if we go on to left, that's at 100%. Right there. Now, the reason I told you you don't have to go both ways is that if I take this to negative 100, you see it goes the other way. Now, if you look at it, there is some distortion there because it is, you didn't actually move that, move it that way. So it's estimating. So there is some minor distortion, but it's not, for the most part, it's not something you really have to worry about. And you mix morphs anyways um, when you actually get into it. So again, that's not going to be something you have to worry about. And now if we bring it down here, we can actually look at Morph 2. 100%. It shrunk down the way I had it. Now, if you shrink something or you scale something and you go negative, it's going to go the opposite way. So you can actually have pulsating. Sorry, I'm getting having fun with that. <laughs> But what you can do here is you can envelope these morphs. If you click on E, first we need to set a keyframe. So we got keyframe of 100 here and negative 100. So I'm going to move out to, let's move this up out of the way. And I'm going to pop this right up here and make it smaller because we don't need it that big. We only have two morphs. So I'm going to move out to 60 frames and bring this to negative 100 and bring this up to 100. Now if you click on E you'll notice that your graph now has a line on it, a line that changes and that's going from 100 to negative 100. Now the easiest thing to do to get a repeat motion is to click this pre-behavior constant and switch it to oscillate and do the same thing for post-behavior now you see it goes down, up, down, up. So now if we actually play it, this part over here wags. And I'll actually show you that in a second, but let's get the other one going too. So we're going to change this to, actually hold on, did we already, ch we already changed that. So I'm going to come in here and we're going to we're on our selection tool. I'm going to select this keyframe. And that's a right click and drag to do the dragging. If you're using a left click, you actually have to click on the keyframe. Change this to oscillate and oscillate. Now when we close this, and I'm going to go ahead and close this. Change this to 300. And the nice thing is, is that will oscillate forever. So no matter what you change your timeline to, it'll keep going unless you tell it to stop. And you can grab a um, individual keyframe and change the post behavior and actually have it stop at a certain point. Okay, let's get to an angle that we can see this better and I will hit play. And this is sort of slow, but it's got two morphs and they repeat over 300 seconds. We'll go ahead and hit pause. And now let's look at the rest of the assignment, because that is all you need to know for morphs. Your morph 
has to be an object that you create yourself and a morph that you create yourself. Like I said, morphs aren't are not very hard to do at all. Um, we just did one. So we got the endomorph made. We actually morphed the object. At least two morph targets. Now what it means by morph target is the base is the base, left is one morph target, and morph is another morph target. So this would, other than it's a really bad model and it doesn't have the environment, this would meet the actual morph requirements of the assignment because it has two morph targets. Now obviously, put a little bit more effort into your model. This is just for demonstration purposes. And make sure you you get some good textures in there and everything and that is it for this the morph embedment embedded object tutorial i hope to see you guys on the next one the next one is going to be lathing have a good day bye